Hi, so we're joined today um, by Snita, who is a software engineer at Capgemini. Um, thank you for coming here today. You're welcome. Um, so I just wanted to ask you first of all, I guess, how you got into the whole sure. software engineering. So um, I studied a mathematics and statistics degree, a BSc at the University of Kent. So um, the idea was, the, deg the whole degree had the mindset where you just need, as in as you work um, on the coursework, you either have a right or wrong answer. So I really enjoyed that aspect of the mathematical degree. And so I got called up um, by a recruiter saying, oh, um, have you heard about the graduate um, scheme for Capgemini? Do you want to apply for it? So I was like, yeah, um, <laughs> go for it. Because at the time it was quite hard to get a job. Yeah. Um, so I've been on many interviews, an um, analyst um, interviews, actuarial ro roles, and so I went for this and I managed to get a job and uh, join the graduate scheme in Capgemini. Mm -hmm. And within the, ca um, the scheme, so you get, um, you get assigned different roles. Mm -hmm. So on my first project, um, I was uh, the project manager's assistant, the PMO, and as a PMO, you get to talk within the different teams. Um, so there's, a, there's the functional team, which is mainly client-based, and then yeah. you have the tech team, who is mainly just developing based on the requirements of what's received by the functional team who talk to them, um, the clients. Yeah. So, and I work alongside um, offshore teams. So um, a few individuals came from India and ca came over and um, so I was a bit curious as to what, what were they doing, how did they integrate in yeah. um, an Oracle system. So as I s saw, as in the, the mindset that they were using, it was quite similar to my mathematical degree. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I just started um, developing, you start small procedures and then you gradually build up. And then yeah. it's, I think I enjoy more of the challenge of trying to fix something. Okay. <laughs> so I would spend, uh, I think at the start, I would spend a whole week on a simple procedure. But yeah. then at the end, once you fix it and you see the outcome and you see it works, you just feel that satisfaction of... Yeah. So that's, I think that's the main thing of my career, moving into tech, is yeah. every day is a challenge. You find many mistakes in code, developing code from scratch and various methods of actually building a system. So building the technical architecture as well, and um, yeah, it's either you're passionate about yeah. <laughs> about code. But that's amazing actually, because you didn't know much about coding or what you could do with coding until you were actually at Capgemini and yeah, until right. you got the opportunity to do a bit of code. Yeah. So would you say that many women out there are missing out on jobs in coding that they could potentially have and excel at? Yeah, um, I believe so because. Um, at uni, no one even mentioned to me, oh, you could try coding, because with a mathematical degree, you could go into analyst job, um, banking job, so I had a wide range of sectors that I could go into, but um, once I touched code, that was it. And um, for women out there trying to get into code, if they're even interested in moving into code, to even attempt there's a lot of online resources out there. Mm -hmm. um, I recently saw on the BBC News they were promoting um, a charity called Women in Code as well. Mm -hmm. And they actually run workshops throughout the whole um, worldwide. And even in London, um, they do free workshops on various um, languages. Mm -hmm. And um, I recently went to one for .NET language, which I have no experience of whatsoever because yeah. I specialize in PLC core. And um, so I just went along, and you could just have no knowledge of whatsoever. What is .NET? Yeah. And they would teach you, and it's a free workshop. You just you can just go after work, go to the place where they've set the, um, the workshop, yeah. And just learn everything from basic, and from there they guide you throughout how to expand your knowledge on this specific language, and whether you get a job within your role if you need either .NET. And within Capgemini as well, um, I had no experience in Java, but my company encouraged me to actually um, take a course and just learn the Java and just implement it in, in the system. Yeah. 
So it's, there's a lot of resource out there for women. It's just um, the matter of putting yourself out there, I would say. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if women are actually exposed to code itself. Yeah. Um, because um, depending if they've touched it or not, but I know in various teams that I've worked with, the ratio of men to women is uh, one woman to six men. And um, that's very shocking to me. Yeah. Because, um, I'm not sure why women are not encouraged to get into developing itself if, a, um, if really enjoy um, the challenge of actually trying to fix a procedure yeah. as in coding and seeing a whole system being built. And um, because I know um, I was reading about an article how the first, um, as in regarded as a first um, engineer was um, a lady called Ada Lovelace mm -hmm. and she implemented um, uh, an algorithm to be run by a machine and she was the first yeah. and the first person to actually become a software engineer is, uh, is a woman. Yeah. So I'm very surprised as to how <laughs> women is not the first, per the first person was a woman. Yeah. So. What do you think it is? What do you think mm. it is that's stopping women oh. or... I would say, um, in my instance, um, people are not actually exposed. Um, women are not actually exposed to the idea of yeah. going to coding. I would say. Um, Do you think it's from a young age as well? So from a young age, they kind of tend to, yeah, um, have the boys think that it's their yeah. kind of thing, and then the girls right. have their own kind of thing that yeah. they're interested in. Because if well. you see nowadays in a company in the, in the tech world itself, majority are men. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say to encourage women, is, I think it's mainly relying on the women to actually encourage other women to get into tech, yeah. um, to show their passion of how, how great it is to work in this, um, in this sector. And um, I, if, even though it's uh, mainly, um, mainly men in the team yeah you can always have your voice as an equal as in yeah. you'd be treated as an equal i'm yeah. not sure if that's what um women nowadays that oh you know the majority of the team are men how am i gonna get my voice out there yeah i mean if you have the courage you know you could do anything you can go into any field mm -hmm. and um to go into tech itself i mean a lot of we are always encourage uh, women to go into tech yeah yeah. And um, how do you find working in a male-dominated environment? Um, as I mentioned earlier on, I do enjoy <laughs> the challenge. <laughs> so, um, yeah. it is quite challenging at times. Um, I would say um, you, the, tend to the attention to get your voice out there is a challenge, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, but everyone is treated as um, equal uh, within the team. Mm -hmm. And even if you're a junior, um, you can actually um, learn off all the senior, because um, the people that I've learned coding from were mainly men, mm -hmm. and um, they're willing to teach women. Yeah. It's not um, any sexism or anything. Yeah. And. Um, even uh, at the moment now, I'm actually um, coaching two other juniors on the team, and they're two guys, and they're happy to take instructions from yeah. a woman, <laughs> which is really good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And um, tell me, in terms of the systems that you've built or engineered, what has been your favorite so far? Um, I would say uh, my last project was for the Heathrow. So um, we, uh, we created a financial oracle system mm -hmm. that records, um, that takes in all the data when a flight lands on the runway mm -hmm. and how Heathrow charges each airline. Okay. So um, we created a, finance, a financial system to actually um, create invoices to automatically go out to um, all the airlines. Mm -hmm. And within this, I had no experience in um, creating interfaces, or um, loading data into a system. Everything is just very um, new to me. Yeah. But with the help of um, the offshore team that came over, mm -hmm. all you have to do 
if you want to learn, you can just have to keep on asking questions. Yeah. And uh, um, just pick up um, as much as many skills as you want. Yeah. And most of the um, uh, stuff that I've actually learned was mainly by googling. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know any, if you don't know, um, say um, they come about a requirement to create this interface and a specific procedure, you can easily, with the help of Oracle support out there. So each software has their own support line. Yeah. So if you reach out to the support team saying, oh, what's, what's the method I could create this? Yeah. They would always reply back to you. So it's mainly um, uh, your, you push forward to push yeah. yourself beyond your boundaries mm -hmm. instead of just um, asking a question to the guy that you're learning off, you know, how to do this, yeah. that's the answer. How to do it is better to deep, um, to deeply go into a specific sector mm -hmm. and um, to learn um, throughout the role, as in the role that the requirements that the client needs. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess from uh, what I'd want to know as well, kind of work life balance. Um, mm. I think that's something that is talked about a lot these days. Yeah. Um, I personally don't think that technology is kind of any different to any other role in terms of work-life balance, but it'd be interesting to get yeah. your perspective on it as well. I mean, um, as a developer, I would say, so if you're stuck in a piece of code, I would spend about six hours just looking at the same code, yeah. and you think that, oh, I'm, I'm going to get it soon, as in, just a tiny bit more, let me just test this section. <laughs> And this carries on for hours, for about nine hours. Yeah. And you still be banging your head against the wall, like, why is this not working? Yeah. <laughs> but I think uh, when it comes to developing ones, you have to come to, um, as in, understand that, you know, you need to rest. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, you need to, to be fresh in the morning. Mm -hmm. So to, you, sh you have to call it quits at a certain time. You're like, yeah. okay, I'll come back to it tomorrow. <laughs> and um, so within tech itself, it is long hours. I mean, yeah. if you have deadlines to meet, um, you have to work hard to meet these deadlines. Yeah. Um, but in, I'm, I would say my work balance is okay. Mm -hmm. um, living in um, St. Albans and working, into, uh, working in London um, I tend to plan my social life is a bit more lively now. So yeah. <laughs> and um, which is great about London is yeah. there's so many. Um, so I recently tried salsa. <laughs> for okay. The first time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. How was that? It was it was really good actually. Um, um, a work friend of mine. Um, so he's been going to, um, salsa um, since uni. And uh, as I enjoy dance in general, yeah. I've been um, taking lessons. Even when I lived in Mauritius as well, I did classical Indian dancing. So dancing, anything dancing, <laughs> yeah. I would always go to. <laughs> and I heard that he did salsa. I was like, yeah, just take me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it took me along and uh, yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah. So what are your favorite places to go out to dance in London? Um, I would say, I think the main place would be Mauritius yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the family because um, yeah. everyone just knows song after song, you know, and um, everyone just picks up the vibe from each other. Mm -hmm. But um, I think in London itself, um, I went to a club, it's closed down called Jewelry Club. Okay. And uh, I think uh, yeah. we went together. <laughs> yeah. We did actually, yeah. So I went after I was for when my it birthday. Closed down, yeah. I actually went for my birthday when it was the closing yeah. night. And um, that, so that was the last night. Yeah. So it was really good. <laughs> and it's mainly if you're interested in, to, in uh, the type of music that's being played. And, yeah. Um, so what, what kind of music do you usually like? So I usually listen to R&B, hip hop. Yep, I and hear And soul music. <laughs> and soul music. Yeah. I would say my dream job would be one of Beyonce's backup dancers, but that did work out. <laughs> so I, I ended up going to developing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. So if you can't become Beyonce or her backup dancers, yeah. no, just no, 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 be Beyonce a backup dancers would do. <laughs> <laughs> then just, just you know, yeah. become a coder. So it didn't work out, you know. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, well, thank you so much You're for welcome. your time, Sneeta. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you. And um, I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Yeah, definitely. All right, thanks. <laughs> thank you.